Okay, the start of this class. Last class, I told you you had two memory verses. 2 Timothy 2.15, John chapter 5, verse 39. <clears throat> so what I want you to do, get a piece of paper out and a pencil or a pen. Put your name at the very top. And then you're going you're gonna to write 1 through 10. And then John 5.39, 1 through 10. And go ahead and fill in those words on your memory verses. If you can't remember it right now, go ahead and look at the verse. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. And then write those down. Now what we will do is periodically we're going to ask you to memorize a scripture. And those are important. The reason being is the, the reason why we have any light on mankind and on God's dealing with us is because we have a Bible. This right division of, of the Bible is not, it's not just a classroom experiment. This will explain to you how God deals with men and with man and with yourself. So, memory verses. If I tell you you have a memory verse to, to memorize, you will have it um, in the very near future. So go ahead and uh, get your piece of paper, put your name on it, and write her out. 1 through 10 for 2 Timothy 2.15 and then John 5.39, 1 through 10. All right, now we're going to start uh, a little review. What have we learned so far? Well, we've learned that the word dispensation means to distribute or to weigh out something, something that is distributed or given out. That's what the that's what the word dispensation means. We've learned that dispensation is not a period of time although it includes time but you cannot just say that it's only a period of time that's too simple there's much more to dispensations all right we learned that god dispensed his grace to paul for you that's why we know that it cannot be a period of time ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word so in other words God gave Paul something that he could give to someone else so he says there if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace there is not a period of time called the grace of God but there is there is a uh, span of time, I guess you could call her age, which we will look at here in a minute, where God gave something to the Apostle Paul, a doctrinal foundation, Bible truth, so that he could give it to others and be the Apostle to the Gentiles, which is what he is, to help us to grow in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must understand that much of much of your Bible, until it was finished written, being written in 90, 96 A.D. with, with John in the book of Revelation, uh, that Old Testament, much of, it, much of it was not written. It was oral for, for hundreds and thousands of years. And so God was working one way there, and then began, God began to change. When Israel rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their propitiation, as their payment for sin, then eventually God went to the Gentiles in the book of Acts. And so that's what that's what Paul's talking about in Ephesians. He said, God gave me something. The grace of God was, was established and taught to me for you. That's what he's saying in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2. All right, so we are reviewing. So God, God dispensed 
to Paul the revelation about the and I hate you know, I'm not going to use the, the term that the hyper dispensation let's use the body mystery but there is there is a mystery of the body now we begin to talk about the dispensations as ages and we're going to give some definitions you have to understand that that we are, we are dealing with right division of the scripture with doctrinal things. These are, these, are, these are concepts and Bible truths that are doctrine. And that's how we, under, we, are, we are wanting to, to define scripture in such a way that we can understand God's dealing with man and with men. So, you have to remember that dispensations in Scripture are not defined as a period of time. So when you read through your Bible, you do not find an, a period of time. You find the word dispensation and God dealing with man for for some time, and that that is part of it. And we'll look at look at that here in a minute. All right, there is a a very close connection between dispensations and ages and we will look at that ages are ages is a bible word uh, dispensations is a bible word and so we're, we're going to be studying that today now god is in eternity there is no time in heaven but god's dealing with men is done in time when the lord jesus christ came to be born of a virgin it talks about being <laughs> in 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 the in the in the fullness of time that that's that's god is able to step into time and at, at, at his will when he wants that time to be when it's, that time is the correct time for his will to be done for his revelation to be done so god's dealing with men is done in time. Now, Ryrie, who was a theologian, said this, dispensations and ages are connected ideas. Now listen, important, but the words are not interchangeable. You cannot read a sentence or read a scripture or a passage and if it says dispensation then read the word age in it and when you read the word age in your Bible you cannot substitute dispensations so dispensations and ages are connected ideas but the words are not interchangeable and the word age means a long period of time. So let's look at a couple of verses. I'm trying to get my microphone to stay, stay put here. I hope it's not bothering you too much. All right. Um, Ephesians chapter 3. Get your Bibles. Ephesians. Ephesians. You me, it's later night here. Ephesians chapter 3. Look in verse 5. Here's the word ages used in your Bible. Ephesians 3. Let's start in verse 4. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The Old Testament man, the Old Testament priest, the Old Testament king, the Old Testament prophet, the Old Testament people, did not have any knowledge of the mystery of Christ. Well, what is that? Verse 6 that the Gentiles 
should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of this of his promise in Christ by the gospel there was no understanding of those of of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ in the lives of the Old Testament people when the Lord Jesus Christ showed up born of a virgin born in a stable raised he was born in Bethlehem but he was raised in Nazareth the Jewish people were looking not for a savior of their souls not one to pay the price for their sin but they were looking for a savior quote unquote from the Roman M from the Roman Empire they didn't they didn't they didn't want someone to pay for their sins they wanted someone to deliver them as a as a military leader from Rome so that's 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 age look in Colossians Ephesians Philippians Colossians Colossians chapter 1 and we'll start in verse 25 Colossians 1 25 whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God even verse 26 even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints so the Bible use of the word age shows that the age is talking about a time span and so 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 dispensation and age go together but they cannot be they cannot be um, interchanged we cannot use them interchange interchangeably now we're going to have some quotes I'm going to give you a couple just a couple men just uh, Larkin and uh, Schofield this is what they said here comes Clarence Larkin there is a distinction what does the word distinction mean separation into parts that's the distinction I, I, I want to know all the, all all the different parts that make up something there is a distinction between age and dispensation so you, in other words you can see it you can you can you can you can understand that they are not the same they're separate age and this is this is what Clarence Larkin taught and Clarence Larkin was a tremendous tremendous uh, Bible teacher uh, understood much uh, what, what many men don't understand today he wrote he wrote his book uh, uh, dispensational truth which is a tremendous book and uh, you you would do well to read it so an age is a, is a period between two great physical changes in the Earth's surface. Two great, uh, a period of time, a span of time between two great physical changes in the Earth's surface. That is an age. Here's, the, here's Larkin's ages. The antediluvian. What is diluvian? That's Latin for flood. So, so before the flood, an antediluvian age. Then, you, then he had the present age. So he had he had a time before the flood. Then he had a time from the flood until now. And then he had what he called the ages of ages. So in other words, when 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 the millennium uh, completes and God finishes His work with man and sets everything and defeats the enemy, He sets up the ages of ages. And this ages of ages had two parts to it. Look at the first one, Revelation chapter twenty. Revelation chapter twenty. 
Revelation chapter 20, look in verse 5. But the, death of, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. That's, that's the start. That's the start. Verse 7, And when the thousand years are expired, uh, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And great white throne, in verse 20, chapter 21, verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And that's the start of the millennial age, God ruling and reigning. Then he had what he called the perfect age. The perfect age. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24. Uh, let's start in verse 22. Uh, verse 21. For since by man, so 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. What does he mean? We'll look in the next verse. Your Bible will define itself. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things were, are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Now that, that's, that's some deep stuff there, and nobody knows exactly what that means. There are some ideas and theories, but that's called the perfect age. In other words, God's going to finish all of his work with mankind. He's going to defeat the adversary, and eventually he's going to take care of the curse completely. Death will be gone. Won't that be wonderful? <laughs> no death. No one dies. But that's called the age the ages of age. So that was Larkin. Now what about Mr. Schofield? C.I. Schofield, who the, the tremendous Bible student. And notice notice the word I use, Bible student. I don't say theologian. Most theologians are not good Bible students. They are uh, religious uh, educators. And usually they are proud, heady, high-minded. But C.I. Schofield, who wrote the Schofield Bible, was a Bible student. And he had, he had his, his teaching on, on dispensations. A dispensation is equal to a period called age, uh, an, an age or ages. So he said this, these periods are marked off in Scripture by some change in God's method of dealing with mankind. So that's what we're going to, that's, as we study through this Bible and we rightly divide the scriptures, what we find is that God deals, God's method of dealing with mankind, God is always the same. He's always gracious, gracious. He's always good. He's always faithful. He's always holy. He's always righteous. That's God. But his dealings with men and mankind changes. It's not always the same. God does not deal with you as he dealt with Adam. God does not deal with you as he dealt with Abraham. He doesn't. So, so the periods, these dispensations, are marked off in Scripture by, by a change in God's method of dealing with mankind. That's right. This is we're beginning. We're, we're beginning to get the foundation for rightly dividing our Bibles. This dealing dealt with two things, two questions. 
the question of sin and then the question of man's responsibility in this sin. Do you know what salvation is? Salvation is you taking your responsibility and saying, I'm guilty. That's what salvation is. When you admit to God you're a sinner and you say, I, I, I'm the one who, who, who deserves to go to hell and I'll trust Jesus Christ because he paid, the, he went to hell for me. I don't have to go. That's salvation. It's that simple. So, so God's dealing with man has two, two specific uh, questions. Now, this is what this is what Schofield taught. Each age is a test of the natural man. Now you know what that is from the Book of Romans. The natural man is 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 the man without the uh, without being born again. You have you have an old man. You have a you have a, 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 a an old nature, but you have a new nature in you now also. That's that, we're Christians. But a man who does not have the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, he is he is what's called a natural man. He has he has no no new life in him. So each test in these ages, as you go, as, as, and we'll, I'm sure we'll look at them. Each test, as an age, as as God allowed men to do things, whether it was being a garden by himself, what happened to Adam? He failed. What was what was the failure? He he ate of the fruit. What was what was the judgment? He, God kicked him out of the garden. And cursed the ground. You talk about judgment. That's a judgment. All right. So each test shows man's failure. That's what God's doing with these dispensations through this Bible. When you when you read through this Bible and you figure out exactly what God is God is doing and teaching here, then what happens is you realize begin to realize that God is is uh, he's getting this all together, all prepared, so that one day at the great white throne, he can allow every man to say what he wants to say. But they're all going to be guilty before God. That's what God's doing. So dispensations as ages. All right, so Schofield had seven dispensations. Man, innocent. Man under conscience. What is conscience? That's that you split the word down. Con science with knowledge, understanding. Man under his own uh, conscience, his his own his own knowledge of right and wrong. That's that's what it means. Man in authority over the earth. Man under promise. Man under the law. Man under grace. A man under the personal reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what this is what uh, uh, Schofield, C.I. Schofield, saw and understood as far as the dispensations as he read through his Bible. These men read through their Bibles hundreds of times, and they began to see the great themes of this Bible and how God dealt with men differently. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, to the Millennium, to the Great White Throne, all these different things. Now, who are some of these men? Okay, so man innocent is Adam before the fall. Man was innocent. At one point, Adam was a full-grown man, uh, the most brilliant man that ever lived, but he was innocent. He was like a little baby. He was like a little kid, just, just pure, <laughs> sweet, no sin. Then man falls, and God, God, God says, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see if a man can go by his his conscience, that thing inside." And man fell. Then in man, then we have Noah. You know. You, you think about this. When Noah stepped out of the ark, there were eight people on the face of the earth. 
Noah, his wife, his three boys, and their three wives. And that was it. And God said to Noah, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And he, he, he gave, him, gave him the the authority over it. Then you have Abraham, man of the promise. Then you have Moses, man of the law. Then you have grace after Calvary. And then you're going to have man under the personal reign of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, God Almighty. And that's called the millennium. That's 1,000 years of perfect reign. Why does he do all that? So that what? So that at the great white throne judgment, no man will have any excuse. That's what God said. Now, there's some considerations. This is very important. You need to you need to understand this. I'm taking I'm I'm making these these lessons shorter. They're going to be more. We will be able to cover more lessons in one day, but I want them shorter so that you can go back and find in the lesson. Something you may not understand, and, and and go over it again. If you have a question, send me a, send me a message. I will answer your questions. So dispensations as ages, and some considerations, some things we need to understand. The Bible has a clear distinction. That means a separation. That means that means it's it's broken out so you can see all about it. Between these two things, truth dispensed during a dispensation so there's there's a God dealing with someone and he gives them a truth he tells them something and there's a there's a clear distinction between that truth in that dispensation and the actual time period for that truth in that dispensation what do you mean well Sometimes God gave a, a covenant, God gave a, a, a promise to someone, and it was temporary. It was only for a certain small amount of time. But other times God gave a promise, and it covers throughout time. And we'll look at a couple of those. Here's the, here, look at this. Adam was told not to eat the fruit. In Genesis, what did God say about him? He said, well, if you do eat it, you're going to surely die. Well, did he? Yeah. Turn to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2, look in verse 17. Genesis 2, uh, verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Turn to Ephesians. So when did that happen? <laughs> uh right at 5,000 uh, 5,000 years ago all right Ephesians chapter 2 so we've gone from we've gone from the creation of mankind to the New Testament after the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ God Almighty in the flesh Ephesians 2 1 and you hath he quickened what does quicken mean well in your Bible it means to be made alive and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins so when Adam fell in Genesis 2 that fallen nature that part of Adam that fell has has plagued man through all the different dispensations even till now till grace and it will still be it will still plague man through the tribulation period and into the millennium 
it's there. Man's cursed. All right, here's the second consideration. Turn to Genesis chapter 8. Some of the promises that God made go right on through. They don't change. They are they are uh, uh, ap applicable, we say. Ap they apply even today. Genesis chapter 8, look in verse 21. Genesis 8, verse 20. Genesis 8, 20. And Noah built an ark Excuse me, and, Mo, and Noah built an altar unto the Lord. We're in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Excuse me. A sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, here it is, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Here's a promise. While the earth remaineth. Do you know why, do you know why things are keep going on? Do you know, know my, why no matter what man does? It will still have seed time and harvest because God said it right here. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. There's nothing that man can do to destroy this planet. It ain't going to happen. God has said it's not going to happen. Look at Genesis chapter 9. Here's this, here's this covenant. Um, let's look in verse 9. Genesis 9, 9. And I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of the beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark, to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. That's a promise. And that has gone all the way through. And it's in effect today. And it will go all the way through the millennium. So you have to understand that so these promises or these, these things sometimes span through many dispensations. So, that is, uh, that's the lesson. And I, I hope you get a blessing, un understand it, and we'll sign off till next time.